Bible class, Bible study for the Southside Church of Christ here in Orlando, Florida. I'm Wesley T. Leonard, the senior minister for this great congregation of God's people. I serve here with two visionary elders and 12 industrious deacons and a plethora of people who are just determined, absolutely determined, to be good ambassadors and representatives for Jesus to Christ as citizens in his kingdom. We're glad you're here on this Thanksgiving Eve. We're glad you're here. Uh, maybe you can watch us as you stuff your turkey and prepare your dressing and get the yams all uh, saturated and your greens and your cornbread and your souffle. Mm, I am sure tomorrow will be a delectable meal with you and your family, even though we are minimized by the number of people we can coalesce with. Let's, let's all be obedient. Let's be judiciously careful as there's been another spike in the coronavirus. We do not want to do anything at this juncture that would impede the health of you and your family. I want to remind everybody that every Sunday morning at 11 a.m., every Wednesday night, 7 p.m., you can join the Southside Church right here on Southside Facebook, Southside YouTube channel. Yay, great news. We just surpassed on Southside YouTube channel, we just surpassed 1,000 subscribers. Folks, five months ago, six months ago, we had right at 100. And now because of the popularity uh, and the technology that's exposed on our Southside YouTube channel and the exposure we received. We got over a thousand subscribers, not to mention Facebook, just on Southside YouTube. What a major accomplishment and milestone for the Southside Church. Join us on Southside Facebook. Join us on Southside YouTube channel. Join us on the Southside website, sscoc.org. And join us on the Southside app every Sunday morning, 11 a.m., every Wednesday night, 7 p.m., and to God be the glory. Beloved, let's continue our study 
on the peace of Christ. We have been in this exhaustive, exhilarating study on the peace of Christ for several weeks now. We started uh, in week one talking about the Prince of Peace, Christ himself, how he dissimulates and how he me measures out peace to his people and his church. Then we talked about making peace with God and how essential and vital it is not to be an adversary or the wrong side of God and the remedies to do such. And then we talked about making peace with our fellow man and making peace with mankind. And then we talked in the week after that about making peace with yourself, how the in inner me often is the enemy. And then we talked last week about making peace with our families, how there's a natural tendency, natural tension in the family with people you spend so much of your quality and uh, qualitative time with. Tonight, let's make another quantum leap and talk about making peace with our enemies. We've been talking about the peace of Christ, so let's talk about making peace with our enemies. Let's begin tonight by acknowledging that we all have enemies. If you're a Christian, you, you, you have an enemy, that's Satan. Uh, he's the number one enemy. But, but all of us have enemies. By definition, an uh, enemy is an adversary. An uh, enemy is one who's antagonistic against you. An uh, enemy is one who seeks to do you harm. An uh, enemy is a foe, opposition to you. Enemies are hostile toward you. See, enemy is more than a person who just don't like you. Uh, enemies become your villain. Uh, uh, they make you a villain. Uh, uh, you have serious issues with people who classify you as an enemy. You have serious issues with people whom you classify as an enemy. Number one on that list, uh, the devil, a.k.a. Satan himself. Remember, the Bible says in John chapter 10, verse number 10, that the uh, thief comes as a robber. He steals, he kills, and he destroys. He's an enemy of God. Subsequently, he's an enemy of you and I. L let's go into our discipline tonight on how we can make peace with our enemies. Even the nicest, most kind Christian people in the world, docile, passive-aggressive people, people who are Pollyannish, uh, Goody Two-Shoes, <laughs> Mother Teresa, uh, Dudley Do-Right, e even they have enemies. Uh, you don't have to do nothing wrong for people to make you their enemy. There's three categories, three alliterations, three things I want to fit on the our south side umbrella tonight uh, regarding making peace with our enemies. The first thing we want to expose tonight is that enemies can be everywhere. Enemies can be everywhere. Uh, they can be here, they can be there, they can be everywhere. Enemies can be in front of you. Enemies can be behind you. Enemies can be beside you. Lord knows enemies can be beneath you. Enemies can be located everywhere. And the Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 19, verse number 43, that our enemies have cast and dug a trench around us on every side. Enemies want to harm you destroy you, demean you, degrade you. Enemies, th that rare category. Now, thank God, very few people fall into the category of enemy. There, there are people you don't get along with. There are people you don't like. Uh, there are people who, as my dad used to say, you don't set horses well with. But that doesn't mean they're your enemy. But when those people fall in that category, uh, the Bible says in Luke nineteen forty three that enemies cast and dig a trench around you on every side. They leave you no way of escape. 
uh, you can't play around with enemies. They're trying to stop your heart from beating. They're, trying, they're not trying to put you in the hospital. Enemies want to put you in the grave, y'all. They, they, they want to see your marriage in divorce. They want to see your children on drugs. Uh, Satan is leading this brigade to see the very worst happen to you. Uh, in the book of Matthew chapter 10, verse 36, we're still talking about enemies can be everywhere. Uh, the Bible says enemies can be in your family. We talked about that last week. Uh, they say a man's foes, can, uh, uh, his enemies or his foes can be in his own household. Uh, there's nothing worse than having an enemy in your own household. Uh, it is said, and I believe it, I preached it many years ago, you, you can fight, brothers, you know how this is. Uh, uh, life is like a heavyweight boxing match. And I can fight Mike Tyson. Uh, I can fight Muhammad Ali. I can fight the very best of Rocky Marciano, the history, history's best heavyweight champion. And I can go out there for three rounds and fight. I can get bloodied. I can get hit. I can get, get staggered and stammered. He can bust my lips and close my eyes. But when the bell rings and I come and sit in my corner and my corner men come and converge to help heal me and aid me and comfort me, I don't mind fighting the enemy in the middle of the ring but when I sit down in my corner, I do not expect my corner man to swing on me. Uh, it's a terrible thing to fight the enemy all day. Fight the enemy at work. Fight the enemy at school. Fight the enemy in the community. Fight the enemy uh, even at church. But when you go home to your own habitat, when you go home and get in your corner, and ought to find aid and comfort. It's a terrible thing to be swung on by the people who ought to be in your family. So Matthew 10, 36, a yeah, man's foes or his enemies can be in his own household. Enemies can come from other denominations or religions that, that don't sit well with the doctrine of the church. Uh, do you not know most wars are fight, fought over religion? You know how many lives and blood is shed in the name of somebody's God? May not be your God and my God, but somebody's God. Uh, the Bible says in Romans 11 and verse 28 that preaching or living the gospel makes enemies out of some people. Just the mere fact that you got the nerve, the guts, the chitlins, and the gall to follow Jesus Christ there are some folk who automatically become your enemy. The Bible says that even those who are amongst us, those are folk outside, even amongst us, the people who are in the ecclesia, the episcopos, the body of Christ, the kingdom of God with us, sometimes become our enemies. Philippians chapter 3, verse number 18 says, there's many who walk and you've been told of their walk with God, but they're really enemies of the cross. See, everybody at the church ain't in the church. Everybody you can count, you can't count on, okay? Everybody pat you on the back is not complimenting you. Some folk looking for a soft spot. Some people pat you on the back seeing if you'll cough up something. I came by to tell you today, folks, you got enemies can be anywhere. They can be in your family. They can dig trenches around you. They can be enemies because you love Jesus and, and live the gospel. Or they can be in the church. They're really enemies of the cross. Uh, they infiltrate the church. Enemies can be everywhere. You, you need to know that. There's no place in your life. There's no segment in your life. There's no safe haven in your life where enemies cannot be prevalent, well, and alive. First Peter chapter five, verse number eight, gives us a stern warning from that great Pentecostal preacher. 
by the name of the Apostle Peter. He says to the church then, and I say to the church now, be sober, be vigilant, because our adversary, word for enemy, our adversary, who is he, Peter? Our adversary, the devil, is going about like a roaring lion uh, seeking whom he may devour. Now, now notice, you've got to contextualize the Bible and take a nostalgic stroll 2,000 years plus back. In ancient Palestine, it was customary as you made your ingress and degress, if you went from Jerusalem to Jericho, or Jerusalem to Nazareth, or Jerusalem to Bethlehem, or Jerusalem to Bethany, all of the subsidiary um, suburban cities of Jerusalem, in your ingress and degress, it was not unusual to see a lion or other wild beasts of the field. And so they would travel and often see lions. And Peter then uh, makes an allegory or analogy that Satan is going about like a roaring lion seeking whom he can and will devour. devour. Satan is going around this world of Orlando or wherever you are like a roaring lion. And this is not some animated lion. This is not cartoon lion. This is not a fictional lion. This is not Lion King with Mufasa and Simba and, and Uncle Scar. Uh, this is not the pride land. This is hell. Satan is looking for uh, some fresh meat. He's going around like a roaring lion. Y'all still didn't get it. Well, since y'all don't understand ancient Palestine, let me contemporize. When you go to the zoo, or you take your child or your children to the zoo, and one of the exhibits you witness is the lion. I love the lions. Uh, you ever notice that lions are never walking around the zoo like the peacocks and other docile animals? They always have the lions locked up. Now, let me tell you something, beloved. When you go to the zoo and the lion's locked up, they don't lock the lion up for his good. They lock that lion up for your good and my good because he will devour you. He will destroy you. He will consume you. One of the most powerful stories in the Bible, Daniel chapter 6, and when there was hungry, carnivorous lions ready on cue to devour the man of God named Daniel. But God gave the lions lockjaw. And Daniel slept all night in a den of lions. I'm here to tell you, Satan is roaring around Orlando, roaring around Sanford, roaring around Okoye, roaring around Winter Park and Winter Garden, and roaring around uh, 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 Castleberry. He, he's going around Altamont Springs. He's going around Claremont, Lake County, Seminole County, Volusia County. He's going around Orange County seeking whom he may devour. But God can give Satan and that roaring lion lockjaw that while he's consuming others, he does not consume the child of God. Yes, enemies can be Everywhere. Second thing you need to recognize tonight, enemies can be troublesome. They're just not everywhere, but they can be troublesome. Uh, uh, they can do uh, physical harm, mental harm, emotional harm, and Lord knows they can do financial harm, and enemies can do spiritual harm. The Bible says in Matthew 10, 17, and in Matthew 10, 21, that the enemy is trying to scourge us and penalize us, even cause us death. The enemy brings us spiritual turmoil. Uh, he, he, he's troublesome. He, he's not like a fly or a mosquito. They're nagging and annoying, but, but they won't kill you. Uh, th this enemy is carrying around venomous poison trying to destroy you and I, your family, your finances. The Bible says, as recorded by the great apostle of all old, 
Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26. Paul says that there was a time in his life he was at peril and robbers were after him. He was at peril at sea. I was in peril, Paul said, on the land and on the sea. He said, I was let down over a wall in Jerusalem in a basket. He said, brethren, my own brethren, sought to do me irreparable harm. See, folks, enemies cause you category, uh, problems. Not only can enemies be everywhere, enemies can be troublesome to you in every component aspect of your life, mentally, emotionally, psychologically, financially, and spiritually. Galatians chapter 2, verse number 4 said, uh, false brethren can be enemies. Uh, there are a few of us, myself, Brother Snell, and other friends like I have, like Brother Alvin Daniels, Brother Orpheus Haywood, you name them, uh, Dr. Cleavon Matthews, uh, Dr. Richard Barclay. Uh, there's a plethora of people that I know and am very friendly uh, with across the length and breadth of this brotherhood who can tell you that false brethren will withdraw from you, write letters on you, they scoliate you because you got the nerve to be demonstrative and dramatic in your worship. They make laws where there are no laws. Uh, they allow their traditions and, and their ilks to dominate more than the Bible. And there's nobody who believes uh, more than I do that the Lord has one church, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. The Lord... Uh, son died for that church. He built it. He bought it. He's coming back for it. He runs it. He's the head. It has all preeminence. But I believe we all ought to be governed by the Bible and not other men's traditions. And so sometimes it's false brethren. And these uh, troublesome people can cause issues in several aspects of your life. They can cause problems at work problems at home. Uh, the need is great for peace uh, because uh, enemies can be so troublesome. And when you can make peace and find common ground with enemies, it reduces conflict. So, beloved, we talked, first of all, enemies can be everywhere and anywhere. Enemies, sure enough, can be troublesome. The Lord knows that they can cause you uh, extensive pain and agony and grief. Uh, not to mention loss of life. It's one thing to lose your life. It's another thing to lose your soul. You better off losing your life than losing your soul. But I want to tell you lastly tonight, a peace is possible with your enemies. We started again. Enemies can be everywhere. And then we talked about enemies can be troublesome. But I want to leave you with a good word tonight. Enemies, a peace is possible even with our enemies. Uh, Proverbs 16 and 7 teaches that once the heart and the tongue, one governed by God, the other governed by man, once we're on the same wavelength, it's the same frequency, peace can be possible even with our enemies. The Bible goes on in Matthew 5, uh, 44, it teaches us how to defuse our enemies, how to deal. How do you make peace with your enemies? People who want to destroy you, and be honest, sometimes people you don't have a fun feeling for. The Bible says, Jesus said in Matthew 5, 44, that Sermon on the Mount, that he started with the Beatitudes, he said, bless, it, bless those that curse you, and, and bless those who hate you. And do good for those who hate you. And he says, pray for them who despitefully use you and persecute you. You know how you make peace with your enemies? You got to learn how to pray for, love, and bless people who are trying to do you irreparable harm. See, it's, it, the civil rights movement, um, who was superintended by Martin Luther King, but he is not. Uh, the the uh, provocateur, the progenitor. He studied Mahatma Gandhi. Gandhi studied a gentleman by the name of David Thoreau. And this nonviolent reaction to your enemy, it, it's hard for a man or a woman to keep doing you uh, harm to the highest level 
when you keep showing them love and pray for them. It diffuses their hate. Uh, it, it gives them, uh, it, it leaves them off balance, as King said. Uh, you see, you never fight fire with fire. You fight fire with water. You never fight evil with evil. South side, you fight evil with good. You never fight a lie with a lie. You fight a lie with the truth. You never fight hate with hate. You fight hate with love. And so when you have an enemy, Jesus said on that Sermon in the Mount, Matthew 5, 44, bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. You'd be surprised. That'll make peace with your enemies. Romans chapter 12, verse 14, and verse number 20, both said, bless them who curse you and curse not them. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8 says, love is the vaccine for those who hate you and are your enemies. If you shower your enemies with love, it's a vaccination. It's a remedy uh, to their hatred and animus toward you. Uh, Romans chapter 5 uh, reveals in verse 6 to 11 that this method is tried and tested because we were enemies of God. Humanity, mankind, homo sapien, God's crown jewel of his creation became enmity with God through sin. And beloved, how did God reconcile us through the love of Christ? See, you diffuse hate and love, you diffuse hate and animus with love. Romans 12, 18 says, if it is possible, as much as lie within you, live peaceably with all men. So Paul acknowledges now, it ain't always possible to be at peace with everybody. He said, where it's possible, be at peace. Now, some people are unreasonable. Y'all do know that. Some people, you got to dust your shoes off. As Jay-Z said, brush your shoulders off, and you got to keep it moving. Uh, you got to get deuces to some people. But I came by to tell you tonight, the Bible tells us as Christians, the Bible tells us as the church of Christ, where it's possible, everything that lies within you, give it all you got, then live peaceably with all men. You know how you live peace with your enemies? Love them, pray for them, help them, feed them, visit them, treat them the way they should be treated and not the way they treat you. Okay, so what I'm saying in essence as I prepare the capsule tonight, as you prepare to finish your Thanksgiving dinner for tomorrow, uh, you transform your enemies. You don't fight your enemies because, number one, they can be everywhere. They can overrun you and overwhelm you. Number two, enemies can be troublesome. They can do you irreparable harm. So our goal as Christians is to love the enemy and turn them into a friend. Turn your enemy into an ally. Transform our enemies. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 1, verse 21 and 22, that the Bible says that we were once alienated from God. We were once enemies of God, but now we've been reconciled. We're friends with God. How? Through the love of Christ. So how do we reconcile and make peace with our enemies who once were alienated, are enemies of ours, through the love of Christ? Don't fight your enemies. Win them through Jesus the Christ. It is evident that can happen in the Old Testament in the book of Genesis, chapter 50. It, uh, the close of the book of Genesis, verses 15 through 21, Genesis 50, 15 through 21, Joseph, the 11th son of Jacob, uh, at one time was enemies and at war with his brothers. You know, they sold him and, and to uh, Potiphar and they showed him to Egypt and he was thrown in Potiphar's house. Potiphar's wife lied on him. He spent time in prison with the butler and the baker. He interpreted Pharaoh's dream. He ended up uh, secretary of agriculture uh, under Pharaoh's regime. He was second in command in Egypt. 
And when he had ascended to his position, his brothers appeared before him in Pharaoh's palace. Now famine has infiltrated Israel, but their brother Joseph been sold to Egypt, but now he's uh, lodged and in charge. And when he recognized his brothers standing before him begging for bread, with all that power, stature, and gravitas he had in front of him, he could have exerted retribution against his brothers. But no, here comes the love of God. He said to his brothers that what you got to say to your enemies, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Folks, you defuse your enemies, not with hate, but with love. You win your enemies like God won us through the blood of Jesus Christ. Remember, enemies can be everywhere. Enemies can be troublesome, but peace is possible even with your enemies through Jesus Christ. We were once God's enemies. First Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. The Bible says, Now we are chosen generation. We are royal priesthood. We are holy nation. And the Bible goes on in verse 10 and says, In times past, we were not his people, but now we are his people. How? Because we obtain mercy through Jesus the Christ. And that makes us more like God when we treat our enemies with kid gloves. When we love our enemies, now we're mimicking and parroting God Almighty. You see, beloved, we want to make peace and not war. Uh, we want love and not hate. We want good and not evil. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, Jesus again in arguably his greatest sermon, the Sermon on the Mount, I was uh, privileged to preach right there when he preached the Sermon on the Mount. The Bible says in Matthew 5 and 9, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. You see, you are a child of God. You mimic God. You emulate God and duplicate God when you're making peace even with your enemies. You want to transform your enemies into a friend and that's only possible through Jesus Christ oh what a exciting exhilarating steady this is for me making peace with our enemies remember enemies are everywhere it's get around but quit, quit, quit try. I'm gonna move I'm gonna leave uh, I'm gonna leave Orlando and move to California they out there too you, wherever the devil is uh, the devil is everywhere God is, everywhere. Okay, enemies are everywhere. Uh, quit making, your husband's not your enemy, girl. Your wife is not your enemy, fella. Your parents are not your enemy's children. Your preacher and your elders are not your enemy's members. Okay? Enemies are everywhere. Enemies can be troublesome. But peace is possible with our enemies through Jesus and his blood. I want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. Don't eat too much. Enjoy the fellowship, the cornea with your family and your friends. Join us this Sunday, uh, the fifth Sunday and the last Sunday in November, the 29th. Join us Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Southside Facebook, Southside YouTube. Yay! We got a thousand subscribers. Southside um, website, sscoc.org. Southside app this Sunday 11 a.m. next Wednesday 7 p.m. Want to remind all Southside members on Sunday December 13th 12:30 p.m. after our morning worship. Want to remind all of you we'll have a virtual uh, Zoom congregational meeting, and chief amongst our subjects will be uh, when and if we should be reopening to corporate worship. And for those interested, remember our teens and our children is virtual Sunday school, 10 a.m. preceding our morning worship. But look, have a happy, happy, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, don't, don't spend too much on Black Friday or Cyber Monday. Just remember and never forget, peace is possible even with our enemies. Good night and be blessed.